This is Witchbase News for Friday the 24th of November 2023. I'm Commander Burr. An Elite Dangerous News this week. Canon Research analyzes the aerodynamic qualities of a standard UK house brick. The Titan Taranis has now been completely isolated. A super rare narcotic commodity is available for a limited time and more. You know how this bit goes. Please like, subscribe and ding that little bell so that YouTube is kind enough to show you all our content. And if you'd like to help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. Just a heads up it's that weird Black Friday time of year again where everything is on sale just before Christmas when it then goes off sale again just before going on sale again in January. That feeling of horrific existential dread that you have hanging over you is your Steam client whispering to you in the voice of a child while your bank balance quivers terrified in the corner of the room. Elite Dangerous and the Odyssey expansion are on sale again right now if you're in the market for a second or more account. Elite is a whopping 75% off and Odyssey is a nearly as whopping 65% off making them both cheap as flipping chips right now. That sale ends on the 28th of November 10am Pacific. Not to be left behind the ARKS store is similarly doing the Black Friday thing right now as well until December the 1st. That means that not only are there discounts right across the whole range of cosmetic items in the store from paint jobs, ship kits, spacesuits, engine and weapon colours through to bobbleheads but also that the much prized midnight black paint jobs are also on sale for this limited period only. You'll find a link to the Steam store and the Elite Dangerous store in the description below. Commander Sovereign Winter of Canon Research has published another of their engineer dissections covering the performance aerodynamics of the various spacecraft options in Elite Dangerous. This time out, brace yourself, it's the turn of the Type 7 transporter. Yes you heard that correctly I did use the words aerodynamics and Type 7 in the same paragraph. The author of the extremely in-depth analysis makes note that the venerable and often derided T7 is frequently referred to as a flying brick. The document therefore compares the aerodynamic performance of the T7 alongside an identical analysis of a UK standard house brick and found the comparison to in fact be unfair. They even provide copious graphs, statistics and fluid flow analysis animations to back up their findings. This is proper important science. Of course finding that the T7 doesn't handle like a house brick in an aerodynamic environment doesn't automatically mean it fares well as an aerodynamically efficient vehicle overall but the document is no less hugely entertaining for it. You'll find Commander Sovereign Winter's aerodynamic analysis of the Type 7 transporter and indeed the UK standard house brick linked below this video. It is almost exactly one year since the Taranis maelstrom arrived in the bubble after its long trek across the galaxy and one year since what essentially boils down to a Thargoid BGS control bomb landed with it putting the systems in its sphere of influence into a state of either alert, invasion or worst of all control. Eventually we would see a total of 8 Thargoid maelstroms established on the fringes of the bubble each with a Titan Thargoid mothership at its heart spewing forth invasion forces, chaos and carnage. The forces of humanity have however pushed back and pushed back hard. At the height of the invasion there were 1186 systems under Thargoid control but as time moved on we got more tools, more options, more coordination and we've just gotten better and as things stand today there are now just 301 systems under Thargoid control and a week doesn't go by now where a system slips from alert to invasion. We're not just holding back the tide we're making the tide go out. Case in point this week saw the first major benchmark moment in the fight back against the titans themselves. 
After a significant community coordinated effort the first titan to arrive, Taranis, is now completely isolated. It has no systems in its sphere that are under its control or even under threat. Every system around it has been cleared of Thargoid influence. There are now 5 systems surrounding it that are in a state of recovery with hauling efforts already well underway to get those systems back on their feet. To all intents and purposes, as things stand at least, the Titan Taranis has failed in its mission. We don't yet know if the Titans can be driven away completely but for right now Taranis is a threat to no one. With that the effort moves on and the next target to fall is likely to be the Legong Titan. The AXI have already turned their lidless eye towards it and right now it has 12 systems under its control and one of those has already been cleared this week. If you ever wanted to get involved in the war against the frightful freezers but felt you weren't equipped for it or you couldn't make a difference that is demonstrably not the case. If AX combat or even contact with Xenos in general is really not your thing then there's still plenty of hauling and rescue work to be done around all the titans and repair supplies are needed in bulk around the now subdued titan Taranis. In game check the maps war filters or outside the game look at the DCOH website, the AXI, Operation Ida or Disaster Evacuation Discord servers to learn where you're most needed. You'll find all that linked below this video. What Taranis or the Thargoid themselves do now will be interesting. It's not outside the realms of possibility of course but it seems extremely unlikely to me that FDev would develop all these new assets and gameplay associated with the war thus far just to have us make it impossible to interact with if we're successful at it. That would be like making hauling stop when everyone had bought everything or you know whoops we killed all the pirates finally. It's possible that update 18 which is still in our future may hold the answers. When that is due into the game is currently unknown. One of the galaxy's rarest of rare commodities that has been completely unavailable for an extended period has now this week become available again thanks to player efforts. The narcotic known as Wolf Fesh which is only available in the Wolf 1301 system at the station Saunders Dive requires an anarchy faction to be in control of the system for its production to continue. Until this week that wasn't the case. However, after manipulating the background simulation system to put the anarchic faction Wolf 1301 syndicate back in control Commander Project 676 and the Morpheus Mining Corporation are very pleased to announce that, right now at least, the mostly legal synthetic psychoactive drug is now back on sale. In celebration of the achievement the Morpheus Mining Corporation has declared a week long event they're calling the 3309 Thanksgiving Festival see what they did there? of Wolf 1301. If you're looking to stock up on a pint or three of the loopy liquid then get yourself over to Saunders Dive in Wolf 1301. The bonanza likely won't last. Will you be running some Wolf Fesh out of Saunders Dive and selling it under the nose of the popo? Are you hauling something altogether more legal and constructive to aid in the repairs around Taranis or are you intently studying the hypersonic aerodynamic qualities of a house brick? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then, 07 Commanders, follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.